Um, FASO Fridays gives me hope. This morning, feeling hopeless after the Syrian bombing and the uh, Justice Gorsuch getting um, approved. Um, I was so angry that I said I have to go to FASO Fridays because seeing the people here and being involved in the resistance movement gives me hope. Thank you. I will say about hope that I don't have much hope in this administration and I don't have much hope that John FASO will do the right thing. However, hope springs eternal because hope must spring eternal. And one of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther King is, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. I think what gives me hope is that Kingston and Beacon have decided to become welcoming cities, and that gives me hope that there's a lot of good people uh, looking out for each other in this area. Hope is one of the driving forces behind every choice in America. So we hope for the future, health, happiness, participation in politics and government, locally and federally. Keep the hope. I think the hope is that more and more people come out to get involved and work for the future that works for everyone. I would say that personally I'm going to just keep on trying and that, that's, you know, so it's, that's my goal. That we keep taking these situations to heart and just wake up and wake up all of us. Keep waking up and getting out to work. Okay, I have my hopes pinned on 2018. We have all those federal prosecutors that were let go, all the people that have left and are going to be fired from the EPA, uh, and from other government agencies, those are all good potential Democratic candidates, and we're going to unseat these bastards. Yes! I'm not real fond of taking what the little guy has to get for health care just so you can get money for the rich. Not happy. And yes, I am a constituent. Don't give up hope. I know it seems like these are terrible times, which they are, but we have to be hopeful and we have to work towards achieving our goals. We have to fight, we have to have the resistance, because hope isn't enough. That's too passive. We've got to be active. Hopefully active. Hopefully active, <laughs> yes, or actively you hopeful. Say, tell me. Well, you know, I, I will say that I was feeling initially despondent after this election, and then recently I heard, um, I heard Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and always when you get people who are in their 80s who've been through you know, World War II and the Depression, or at least the end of the Depression, they, they have a bigger picture. And she said that um, although these are bad times, talking about Trump, these are bad times, she said, but she has hope. And she said that the Women's March and the activism makes her feel that the pendulum will, will swing back and we must have hope. And that was very helpful for me. So I'm with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That uh, Banyan has uh, been de-escalated as a big hope as far as I'm concerned. Now if Miller follows him along with a few of the other people in the uh, administration, hi, hope hi. is there. So you're hopeful this week? I'm more hopeful than I was, say, three weeks ago, yes. Yep. So my hopeful thought is that more of Americans are becoming enraged and engaged. Single-payer health care, that's what I'm Say it again, I'm sorry? Single-payer health care, so everyone is covered so, so that uh, medical care is a right, not a privilege. That's what I'm for. I would really like the legacy that Hinchy left us would be followed because he gave an example of such fine leadership. And we have not seen that. So if they did and something, for hope, I, I, I was I'm just hoping that all these people will be heard. Entrance. I don't know. Speaking as a millennial, I don't think that there is much hope uh, amongst my my peers and 
of my fellow political dissidents. Um, I think a lot of people my age are feeling disillusioned with the political process. We recognize that uh, electoralism is something that doesn't really work if we're trying to accomplish like goals for the working class, for the people. Um, it's hard to, to have hope. I really think it is. Um, when we live under capitalism and people are dying daily, people are wage slaves, people are you know, subjugated by the bourgeoisie to produce goods that have no purpose in life. And, um, you know, we're... The political reality that we're facing is... Uh, I wouldn't say it's unprecedented because we've faced dark times before. And I think that uh, it's important for radicals, for like real political leftists, like socialists, communists, and anarchists, to organize and uh, build counterpower and not just um, expect things to change because we're asking people to change or expect things to change because we're picketing outside of an office. You know, I, I don't think that that will necessarily yield any any results. And that comes back to electoralism. There's, there's this real kind of disconnect between, I guess, representative democracy and what I believe to be true democracy. When we elect people like John Faso to govern us, they're not working in our interests. They're working in the interests of people who pay them. They're working in the interests of corporatists and capitalists. Capitalism is a scourge, a scourge of um, the working class and we need to get rid of it. It needs to be done away with, it needs to be abolished. We need to move to a more fair economic system, one that really holds the interests of the working class, one that works for the working class. And we need to build a movement by the working class. Change comes from below, not above. And that's what I believe in. So that's your hope? That is my hope. Thank I hope you. for the working class to rise above the bourgeoisie and overthrow the ruling class. I just hope for a better life, that's all, than what we have now. Um, basically, I hope that, that, that people start noticing the world, the, 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 the natural world, the water, and stop thinking so much in a people world where, where profits of a very few make a huge difference. I hope very much that the butterflies, the bees, the water, the soil, everything the Indians are talking about gets to survive because that's the only way we're going to survive. And I've heard that the Koch brothers with this big push for all these oil lines that, 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 that Trump is giving them to get them to bribe people his way would up the temperature two degrees and give them one billion dollars a year. Is this what we're really here for? To support the Koch brothers in annihilating of the world? I really, really, really hope that people, including Mr. Faso, get the idea that it's what people are what counts, the environment is what counts, the creatures are what counts, and the, the other stuff is only temporary, and it only puts money in a very few pockets that normally don't help at all. Well, hope springs eternal, obviously. Optimism. Um, I think hope is, is an action word, and that it's, it's like faith. It's an action. And so if you want to have hope, you have to do something. You have to commit to something. You have to have some kind of passion for it to have hope. Hope just doesn't come along. It just doesn't swing by and go, okay, we're here now. No, you have to get involved. And whatever you're hopeful about, great. That's good. Share that. But be, be willing to share hope. You know, and, and this is all about, I mean, I'm, I'm going to really sound corny right now at this point, but here I go. This is all about love, too. This is about that we're a society not set up to be just, I'm, I'm going to get ahead and I'm going to leave the rest behind. No. The real, the real society, the real compassionate society is we move ahead and we grab others and, and bring them along with us. And that's why everybody's out here, because they're here not for themselves. They're here for everyone. And uh, I hope that works out. <laughs> so there is hope. If we stop hoping, then the battle is already lost. Because without hope, there can be no win, there can be nothing. And we hope that John Faso comes to his senses and reverses his decision to get rid of, of um, ACA. And I'm with the union because the union gives me hope that as long as we are working together, there's always hope. And 
hope deferred makes the heart sick. However, without hope, the battle is already, already lost. Hope is that the future is better than it is now. We gotta have hope. We gotta have peace. We don't need that what's going on in the world right now with war, because we need to take care of our people. That's where the real hope is in the future. For our children, for everybody else, that is our hope. Not anything else but our children and the planet. I guess there are times when you kind of almost wonder if hope is still a viable option. There's a lot to hope for, but um, when you've got a president that starts his term, practically starts his term off with an or a bombing, um, it's kind of hard to keep your hope alive, isn't it? My hope, I just keep trying. I don't. Uh, I kind of don't really think about hope as a uh, as a concept. I just keep just keep trying to keep things, uh, try and prevent the world from going to hell. Events like these, the familiar faces in this crowd and among the many other events that Citizen Action and other groups put together give me a lot of hope that our country is prevailing through hard times, that we're coming together out stronger than ever before, that we have motivation we never had before, and that we can overcome this. One of my former colleagues who lives in Brooklyn told me that someone in his family now regrets having voted for Trump. And uh, another neighbor who had a Trump sign prominently displayed in the front of his house took it down recently. So I think I'm hopeful that people are beginning to understand who Trump is, what he represents, what he is not going to do for the people who voted for him, and the harm that uh, he potentially and unfortunately real, will do to, to our country and our society. So the de there's a downside, but I think the upside is that people are beginning to realize that this first hundred days is not a march, a triumphal march, but it's, a, it's been a disaster. And uh, I just hope that people are, are, are seeing that and will respond uh, at the soonest time we can do it in as voters is in 2018. So that's, I'm hopeful that that will happen, that we can change 2018. Um, and I'm going to do my part to, to help it happen, make it happen. Yes. Five or six days ago at a conference call was that the World Business Organization, WBO, which is also the International Chamber of Commerce, became part of the United Nations as in an observing nation status. We're cooked. We're cooked, basically. We can do what we want to do. We have to raise our voices or we've died. But we now have a formidable force. They are not a nation. Just as corporations should not be people, corporations should not be nations. Well, this is a pink drum, of course. Uh, pink is the important color, the color of hope. My daughter-in-law's having a baby, a little baby girl. So we can match that up. She's going to have a baby in a couple of weeks. So one has to be hopeful. We're, we're hardwired, I think, to be hopeful when we see a baby. Well, it's spring, and with spring, there's always hope. No matter what, the, the earth still, flowers still bloom, and, um, and the grass turns green. And so no matter what happens, there's always some hope.